This week we're going to make a toy model of one of these. I downloaded a model from the internet and then brought it into Blender to modify it into a toy. Then I dropped it into Chitterbox Pro for slicing. Elegoo was nice enough to send us over a Mars 2 printer. I have an inexpensive little curing oven and here the parts are cooking away in there. Here are the parts that the printer made and as you can see they came out really nice and clean. I saw that the Mars 2 is selling on the Elegoo site for $200. And I'll tell you, to have a machine at that price that makes prints of this quality is a pretty good deal. This model needs to be assembled to make the finished prototype, and there's two ways I could have done it. One is just entirely on the computer using Blender to weld everything together and fill in what needs to be filled in. The second way is with a combination of 3D printing and hand sculpting, and that's what I'm going to show you today. The first step is to cut them apart here at the jigsaw and to do some sanding so the parts fit together better. The belt sander is really aggressive, so I like to follow up the belt sanding with a little bit of wet sanding, and that just cleans up the surface really nice, makes it nice and smooth. And I'll show you another little trick of the trade here. The trick is to put a little divot in the back of each piece, because when you stick two things together with wax, if you coat the whole surface with wax, it's just going to make a line that shows. If you put a divot in there, you just fill up the divot with wax and you get a nice tight bond between the two sides and it'll hold it really well, just like that. Works good every time. These pieces are ready to assemble and fill in and sculpt to their final form. So I'm going to start the process just simply by flowing some wax down in there and filling in the center of this piece. You know how I talk about how you have to design for casting. Uh, that really comes from my experience as a toy sculptor and having to design for toys because I'm not making an accurate model of a wellhead drill. I'm making a toy that looks as much like a wellhead drill as I can get it to look and yet still fit all of the parameters, the manufacturing parameters that I've got to hit. It doesn't do any good if I sculpt a prototype that can't be manufactured. So you've got to make the necessary changes to respect the process of manufacturing. Now we're going to apply the cutter heads to the bit. Well, there's going to be a lot of filling in down in there still. Okay. That's how they fit like that. That looks good. All right. Now see down in that down in there you can still see we're going to have to do some filling in. So it starts out like that, and you can just see those deep holes in there. You just can't have those spaces down in there in something that's going to be cast because the mold material would just get trapped. So I'm just I'm going through, filling it in, because that's what you got to do to make this into a castable piece. The parts are all waxed up and ready to go, as you can see. and They're looking pretty nice, but now we're just going to clean them up and polish them. And that entails nothing more than just going around and scraping out all of the extra wax smoothing out things. It's not very exciting, but it's got to be done. I will, however, show you one tip that works really well, and that is you take some 4 aught super fine steel wool like this, and you wrap it around a Q-tip. And what that gives you is a very soft polishing tool. And then this is just lemon oil, this furniture oil, and you just go through and you just smooth out your wax all around. Then you can use the soft end of the Q-tip to sponge up your wax. All right, so I'm just going to go around and do this whole job, and I'll come back to you guys when they're nice and clean. Cups are about as simple a mold case as you can find, and they're also the mold cases I use the most. And these are just the perfect size for these little models. So they'll go right on in there like that. Time to break out the Wolf Sticky Wax. Get these things stuck down in there in the cups. Lay a nice coat of wax on the bottom and drop it in. Try to get it well centered up. This is why I love wax. Easy and simple. Let's go mix some rubber and get these filled up right now. But before I do that, I wanted to show you, I never 100% trust rubber to cure against 3D printing resin. So I made a little test. Take nothing for granted, so let's give it a peel. Peel it on off. Oh yeah, works perfect. All right, so no inhibition, no problems, no stickiness. Everything is beautiful. I guesstimated by eyeball how much rubber to mix up and got it all vacked and nicely de-aired, so let's go ahead and pour it. 
no sprues, no vents, nothing, just straight pours. As always, I'm gonna pour from the bottom. I'm especially worried about those threads. I don't want to trap air in those fine, fine threads. So I'm gonna pour from the bottom and go slow. And I'll be able to pour a little faster once I get past the threads. Right about at this level, there are these three holes. And I also wanna make sure that I see the rubber. I actually watch the rubber fall into those holes from one side. I don't wanna drape those holes or that's just a classic place to catch a bubble. All right, see, even here at the top, I'm just letting the rubber flow around. Don't wanna drape those teeth. Let the rubber flow around from the bottom up. That's how you pour a mold. All right, got them topped off, very good. <laughs> just about the right amount of rubber too. A little bit of extra, but not much. Satisfied with that, let's let those sit for 24 hours and we'll see what we got tomorrow morning. 24 hours have passed, time to cut the molds open. Hope for no stockage. Look at that, so clean. Some paper cups will not work. The rubber will stick to them, but these are good. And they got some kind of coating on them, some kind of wax, probably. Perfection. Let's just give the mold a light little trimming just to make it party. There really is no orientation on these, so I'm inclined just to go straight down and see what I hit. Cut the line as straight as you can at the model and jaggy away from the model. But there's absolutely no need to go nuts on the jagginess. Does not need to be crazy. As always, I want to do the absolute minimum cut that will free the part. Last thing I need to do is overcut it. See if that'll come out. Might. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, I caught the model between my feet. Ah, beautiful. Moves like a jungle cat. Oh, came out in one piece, no damage to the model. Ooh, look at that. Look at those threads. Ooh, I don't see a flaw. Let's hope for the best. Let's get these molds banded up. You don't want your rubber bands to be too tight. You want them to just fit, just hold the mold closed. Then I massage the parting line, make sure it's nice and tight. How's that, does that, does that work for you? How's that for a parting line in there? If the parting line looks good on the outside, chances are it'll look okay on the inside. That is not bad. That's not bad at all. Not bad. To find out how much resin to mix up, I weighed the parts. Let's mix up some B-side. You gotta shake this stuff, I already shook it. Now what I'm gonna do is put some dye in it. This is a UD dye, also from Cell Pack. This is just black dye, I'm gonna make these parts gray. This stuff's powerful, so just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go 50, let's go 25. Okay, 50 grams. Stir, stir, stir. This is quick cast and it earns its name because it goes off fast. Let's get these things filled. Just dump it in, straight pour. All right, top it off nice and neat. Okay, let's get these things into the tank. The leftover resin in the cup serves a purpose. It's a witness cup. <laughs> Tells us what's going on with the resin in the tank. <laughs> it's ready to go, let's pull it. And away we go. Fun times, this is what we wait for. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, oh, nice, absolutely nice. Tell you what, look at the parting line that that left on that part. That is what this entire channel is all about. Look at the fact that there is not a single bubble in sight. First one was good, let's hope the second one's good. Second verse, same as the first. Very, 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 very moderate parting line. Look at that parting line. See that? And not a bubble in sight. Nowhere is there a bubble. I'm really pleased with how these came out. 
Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. Hope you got something out of it, and I will see you next week. <sighs> okay. What's next here? Oh, yeah. These.